Hello, and welcome to our webinar entitled Coaching Your Members from VADS to Work Plans. Thanks for joining us. The target audience for this session is those individuals who directly supervise or are responsible for the supervision of VISTA members. Regardless of your role within your VISTA project, we're glad to have you. I'm your host, Andy King, Senior Training Specialist with AmeriCorps VISTA in Washington, D.C. Really delighted to be here with you. Um, and I'm joined today by Eric Powell, who's our main presenter. Eric is a training specialist with the VISTA program here at AmeriCorps headquarters in Washington, D.C. Eric's wide-ranging professional knowledge and abilities and his easygoing personality make him an important asset for VISTA and a fantastic presenter for our webinar today. So welcome, Eric. Thank you very much, Andy. That was very kind of you. I'm very excited to be here, especially having previously served as a VISTA member and a VISTA leader, and now in my role as a training specialist. And from what I've seen, it's just so important for members to go beyond their VISTA assignment description to really create and customize a work plan with the help of their supervisor. The incremental milestones and the plan for professional development, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, can really be what makes the difference in their service year. So let's go ahead and discuss how you can use your supervisor role to establish and maintain clear structures that will help members more clearly understand their role and their tasks throughout their service year. Today, we're going to cover three topics that will offer strategies and tools that supervisors can use to steer members, both new members and currently serving members, to a successful term of service. We'll begin with distinguishing the purpose of a VAD from that of a work plan. Next, we'll identify the benefits of using a work plan for both the member and for the supervisor. And then we'll wrap things up with a discussion about how to support your members by coaching them in creating and maintaining a work plan. At the end of today's session, we'll answer questions that you may have. This is going to be an exciting journey, so let's get started. A firm foundation is critical, and we wanna make sure that we have a strong basis for outlining the purpose of the work plan. To do that, we'll begin by explaining what a VAD is and its purpose, because that really is what shapes the member's work plan. Will you ask, what is the purpose of a VISTA assignment description? In simple terms, and you may already be aware of this, a VAD outlines a member's path during their term of service, including project goals, objectives, and member activities that they will successfully meet or complete to satisfy project needs. A VAD breaks down the project goal into a realistic set of activities and objectives. And also, VADs orient the member to the project, the organization, and the community in which they will serve. In general, VADs are usually fairly broad and do not have the details that members need to understand how to meet their professional and project goals. Think about VADs being kind of like deliverables or final milestones. These are the final activities that need to be completed. Members can create steps and plans to achieve these final milestones by creating and using work plans. Work plans are typically more detailed and focus on smaller individual project tasks. These bite-sized tasks are called interim milestones, and each is an essential step to arriving at the final milestone. Think about how a map really helps you consider a route for your journey, where you are now, and where you want to be. Well, think of a VAD kind of like a journey map. You know where you are going, which is the final milestone in activities, and the stops that you'll make along the way, such as activities that need to be completed on the way to completing bigger activities. The work plan in this example is the detailed itinerary to go with the map that explains and notes the incremental milestones of where you need to be by when, what you'll need to get there, and more specifically, how you plan to complete the journey. For example, let's say our final milestone is arriving in France for New Year's. Our work plan would detail the interim milestones or incremental steps that we would need to complete to accomplish this goal. Maybe it would note things like the most useful clothing for that time of year or the best type of luggage, perhaps the time frame and the steps needed to learn some French phrases, or the most appropriate international airport to depart from, and the transportation type and location to use once we arrive in France. 
The work plan really helps you map out your journey in detail and will help you and your members map out their year of service to accomplish their member activities. One simple yet critical note is that we are using the term work plan. And you may have used terms before like work plan, action plan, strategic plan, maybe you've used them interchangeably. Although these terms are not exactly the same and do have some unique differences, today's focus is on explaining and discussing the work plan and the importance of you coaching your members on it. So let's consider clarifying what a work plan is by identifying its purpose. A work plan serves as a detailed roadmap that is meant to bridge the gap between the member's goals and how they can accomplish those goals and their members' activities. And it also breaks down larger tasks into smaller, more manageable steps and milestones, which can really help clarify the needs and requirements for each activity, along with specific timeframes for completion. All right, so now that Eric has outlined the purpose of a VAD and a VISTA work plan, we'd like to learn about your experience. So please respond to the poll uh, that will pop up on your screen by offering two responses. Uh, first question, do you have experience creating and following a work plan? The second is, do you have experience helping your members with their work plan? So we'll give you a few uh, more seconds to complete that poll. All right, it looks like uh, most of you have had a chance to respond. So we'll go ahead and uh, close the poll and publish the results there. And as you can see, um, uh, a good majority, like two thirds of you, uh, have your own experience in creating and following a work plan. Um, and uh, it's more, more of a split, 43%. Um, uh, have already been helping your members with a work plan. About half of you, 48%, have not yet, and a few not yet sure if uh, that's something that you've been doing. So uh, thank you very much for participating in that first activity here. Uh, it's wonderful to learn about your experience with work plans, whether you're creating them for your, and using them for yourselves um, or coaching your members about theirs. Uh, and this coaching element shouldn't be overlooked when it comes to work plans and your members, uh, because some of your members may not have worked, uh, sorry, have used a work plan before, or they may not understand how they work or why a work plan is so important. So uh, let's go back to Eric and dive into this aspect around supervisors coaching their members on work plans. Eric? Thank you, Andy. So allow me to use a quick scenario to frame how a work plan can be helpful to both the member writing it and to the supervisor coaching the member along. Imagine that you are at the beginning of a project and you have a check-in meeting with your new VISTA member, Evan. You see that this member is excited, but he's also nervous about his year ahead and what exactly he will be doing. Fast forward to now thinking about being in the final few months of your project. You're now meeting with Naya, a member you know to have made an impact, but in front of you, she is struggling to identify completed milestones, areas of professional growth, and outstanding tasks. As we move to outline specific benefits to the member having a work plan, consider how you would use a work plan to assist each of these members. Whether you have members who are just starting service or who have been serving for a few months, and I've seen a few people in the chat mentioning some members are already serving and some are new to service. The question is, why is it a good idea to use a work plan? What are really some benefits and how does it benefit people? In this section, we're going to consider how a work plan can support members at all stages of their service. 
To answer the previous question, there are several reasons to encourage each member on your project to develop their own work plan because the work plan helps members better understand and unpack their VAD and activities, and of course, plan their way through the year ahead. It may allay any confusion or concerns that members might have at the beginning of their year of service. It also helps clarify the needs and the requirements for their VISTA project. And it serves as a collaboration tool for members and supervisors to use at regular check-ins and beyond. The clarity of a work plan often hinges on it being accurate, which means each member should create one for themselves to account for their specific activities and their skill sets. Part of the process involves each member really looking at and exploring the objectives and the activities outlined in their VAD, of course, with the support of their supervisor, so that they can both better understand and more easily plan work for those activities. And that can help ease some of the anxiety that some members may feel about certain activities, especially the larger and more complex activities in their VAD. I know from personal experience that it really is great to see how beneficial a work plan is, and I'm hoping that you as supervisors also will see the benefits that the member has of having a work plan. But what's in it for you as the supervisor? Why should you even care? Why do you need to be involved in supporting the member with a work plan? You as a supervisor benefit greatly from each of your members having their own work plan because that work plan really encourages you and your member to collaborate with each other. And that connects to the supervisor's key task of coaching members. With the work plan being a living document that's regularly updated and enhanced, it creates an opportunity for you to both know what's going on and for you to help members through their tasks. It also helps you track the members' progress during and outside of regular check-in meetings. This is a critical step because the work plan is a great foundation for bulleted check-in items as you examine the tasks ahead and how the member is doing on each element. It also helps reveal areas where the member may need additional training, skills development, assistance from you or others. This is key because work plans enable members to input professional development and knowledge they have attained or plan to attain in order to accomplish certain tasks. Work plans also support member autonomy or independence by providing them more specific details and answering many of their questions up front. In this manner, it guides them to human and material resources that they will need along the way, which can really help build their confidence in executing their tasks. This benefits you as the supervisor because the member's reliance on you for every piece of information may lessen as the member begins to answer and resolve items on their own. But of course, you still need to check in with them and support them along the way. And last but not least, the work plan serves as a record of all the great things accomplished over the course of the member's year. Let me say that again. The work plan is an essential tool in celebrating member achievements and successes. And yes, you of course will want to recognize small and large successes, both directly with the member as well as within the VISTA project. These achievements can also make your job so much easier by already capturing progress that you will need to pass along to your project sponsor or project director, who then must report information to AmeriCorps. In addition, tracking accomplishments helps you and VISTA project staff plan to sustain the momentum of the project after the member's term of service is over, as you examine next steps and activities for the next VISTA member or the community. Creating work plan is a vital initial step in a member's journey. Your ongoing coaching and help maintaining their motivation and excitement to fulfill their duties that are spelled out in more detail in the work plan make a huge difference. This recommended practice of coaching your member to create and maintain a well thought out work plan will benefit you both. Let's return now to our talented VISTA members, Evan and Naya, as we look to see how a work plan benefits both of them, the member and the supervisor. Now we should more clearly be able to see and connect the dots between their needs and the benefits of a work plan. So looking back at Evan, remember he's the new VISTA member who is nervous about what he will do, what he will be doing in his year ahead. He will be very well served by building out a work plan that unpacks his VAD. Regular check-ins about his work plan will reveal any areas that need additional support to ensure that he stays on track across his year of service. Naya, the VISTA member who is an effective contributor but has trouble recalling specifics the moment she's asked, 
can really be helped by a work plan because that will list out the milestone progress, the growth opportunities that Naya has, and any resources to help her in her VISTA assignment. All right, so Eric has just highlighted the benefits of work plans, both for members and supervisors, such as the work plan clarifying the project needs for the member, um, and also uh, the way it can help supervisors in tracking member progress. So we'd like to now open up the conversation to get your thoughts on the work plan benefits. So uh, which benefit of using a work plan to support members is most appealing to you and why? So for this uh, activity, we'll use the chat. If you don't see the chat open already, um, click the chat uh, the speech bubble icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we will give you a few minutes to play some music while you're thinking and responding. All right, and we've got uh, lots of responses coming in already. Um, All right, some really great uh, responses here. And um, some, some big themes, I think, are emerging from your responses to this question about the benefits of a work plan. Uh, many of you have identified uh, clarity, clarification, whether it's clarifying expectations or timelines or definitions or um, specific processes and steps like how the VISTA member is going to get things done. So, uh, so that is a big, uh, a big uh, thought or, or a benefit that you've all uh, identified. Another is around organization, right? Uh, organizing the tasks, um, the milestones, uh, sequencing things in a particular way so that they'll build you know, one uh, task on, on others um, and helping to um, you know, take what could be uh, overwhelming for a member and, and grouping together related tasks or helping to sequence things so that it's really clear where to start and where to go next. So um, creating that roadmap, a couple of you have, uh, so, um, so yeah, and then lots of other um, ideas, other benefits here as well around helping to identify uh, other people who would be involved, right? So it's not only the VISTA, this will be interacting with others and relying on others to help support them and um, contribute to their work, uh, identifying resources that would be needed. Um, uh, of course, timeline when things are due and um, having those incremental check-ins so that the big milestones can be reached uh, by having the smaller ones identified. So. Lots of great ideas there. I encourage you to scroll back up and take a look if you haven't had a chance to, to see them all. Um, but really, uh, really terrific participation there. So thank you 
for participating in this chat activity. Um, it is great to see how appealing the different benefits of a work plan are to you and the reasons why you um, may be implementing work plans. So thank you for that and back over to Eric. Yeah, these, these comments are wonderful and we're, this is all helping us uncover the purpose of a work plan and the benefits and why it's so important to have your members do this and coach them through it. So let's continue to talk about how you can actually coach your members on creating a work plan. You'll probably begin with the first, encouraging your members to develop their own work plan, but we wanna start by looking at some components that are useful to incorporate. We've seen that helpful work plan components or sections include things like your name and your member's name, the start and end date of the member's year of service since it's a defined period of time, the overall project period or dates so that the member can clearly see how their work fits into the larger project timeframe. And often this will be a timeframe of 12 months, the VAD objectives and the member's corresponding VAD activities, and then more details about the objectives and activities to include incremental steps, which is a very key part of the work plan or specific tasks that the member should take to accomplish their VAD activities. Additional work plan components include a timeline to keep those incremental steps or incremental milestones and delivery dates for each step organized and to keep progress on track. It includes things like resources, whether they're human or material, that the member can leverage to help them get their work done. And also professional development opportunities and needs for the member to acquire so they can gain new knowledge or skills necessary to complete their activities. And work plans often may include other miscellaneous items that could be included, such as a schedule for check-ins between the member and supervisor so that you can review progress being made, as well as a blank section for the member to record notes and questions. While here in VISTA, we mean one thing when we refer to our work plan, we do not mean that there is a must use template for it. But I will say that a good place to start is with the VISTA work plan template because it's fairly easy to use and it includes example responses for guidance. It's free and we really enjoy the word free. It comes in an editable format so you can replace the example text with information that you have. And it's also readily available. Indeed, we will share the template with you later in the webinar. You will certainly see more of this template momentarily as we explore it and walk you through this coaching exercise. And if you do see sections or formatting that you would change, you're welcome to design a work plan that suits your style or use existing prototypes. I will mention that there are other templates available on services such as Basecamp, Gantt, Miro, and Smartsheet. Keep in mind that these online tools may charge fees for their premium features, but you can certainly try them out for free or see if it's a tool that will work well for you and your member. The VISTA program at AmeriCorps wants our supervisors and members to succeed, which is why we emphasize creating a work plan. What it looks like can reflect your preferences and this same courtesy would be good to extend to your members. So let's dive deeper into the VISTA work plan template. As I mentioned, the work plan does not need any specific formatting gimmicks, just a logical order to the important pieces of information to include. In this example, you see some administrative information is followed by a section about the work plan review process. Rows two and three let us know that this work plan belongs to member Evan McVista and his supervisor is Sue O. Supervisor. The review and update process section, which is row five, indicates three specific points at which the member will revisit and update this work plan, weekly supervisor meetings and quarterly and final member updates. This work plan further specifies that these updates will include discussion and writing. The remaining sections of this work plan's opening page are for Evan's performance standards, activities, staff and resources available and interim milestones. Let's pause here to review what we mean by interim milestones. First, the final milestones for Evan will derive from his VAD activities, and those will be accomplished through smaller interim milestones. Interim milestones are opportunities for Evan to document short-term timeframes and achievable tasks that will ultimately, ultimately lead up to final timeframes and tasks. 
We're going to talk about this more in a few minutes, but I will mention that the last three sections in rows seven through nine direct the reader to subsequent pages in the work plan. So let's review Evan's VAD activities on the next page. Evan's VISTA assignment description displays in, in the work plan and outlines the project goal, the objective, and the member activities, which we well know, and which we can think of as two final milestones. Though only one member activity displays on the screen currently, this work plan does include two activities, and each activity has its own sublist of three tasks. We're going to focus in on Evan's plan for outreach and recruitment activity. The first task that unpacks this activity is identify the skills, abilities, and experiences sought in volunteer mentors by January 31st, 2024. A great next step for Evan, along with the supervisor, is for him to document and in the incremental steps that would make up this task. All right, so now it's your turn. Uh, we'd like you to take a few minutes, put yourself in the role of Evan's supervisor uh, and consider how you would break down Evan's task um, of identifying the skills, abilities, and experiences sought in volunteer mentors by January 31st of 2024. We'll give you about a minute. Um, and again, we'll use the chat for this activity. So you've got about a minute or so, respond with a few words or a sentence on um, how you would break down Evan's task that you see there on your screen. So what interim milestone or bite-sized activities could Evan complete to make progress on his task? All right, so lots of great ideas coming in here. Uh, thank you, clearly. Um, we've got some experience in the room, which is tremendous. Uh, so uh, a number of you mentioned helping to uh, identify interim milestones, right? Or uh, intermediate uh, things that, that need to be accomplished before moving forward and identifying some of those opportunities. Um, so that Evan can keep track of where he is and, and know uh, where he would need to go after that. Um, also, a couple of you uh, identified some specific examples of what those um, milestones might be, right? Like developing a survey and uh, uh, actually talking to mentors and, and asking them uh, or doing some research around uh, specific volunteer recruitment. Um, so, so those were some common themes that came up there. Um, others of you mentioned uh, looking back within your own organization, look back uh, at successful mentors uh, who've been involved in the past to see what, um, or your current mentors as well, uh, and see what they had to say. So really talking to people who are directly involved. Um, so uh, kind of a mix here of some bigger strategies and some specific interim uh, steps that you could identify for uh, Evan. So um, again, thank you for engaging in this chat question. Um, these are some really good examples that you've offered. Uh, back over to Eric, who's going to take a deeper look at some of the next elements of the work plan. 
Thank you, Andy. I'm sure we could spend hours just looking specifically at the work plan, but I do want to draw our attention right now specifically to the last page, which echoes some of the interim milestones that we all just got to see. Because this is where the member, with help from you as the supervisor, analyzes each of their VAD activities to identify smaller interim milestones, or some people call them incremental steps, that will help them achieve the overall milestone and activity. So we call this table work plan detail for member VAD activity 1A. And it's, it's for the first of Evan's subtasks, which is written in the activity column. The interim milestones column outlines five incremental steps that Evan should complete. And the table includes deadlines, a space for actual delivery dates, and available milestone resources to assist Evan with staying on track. Evan's first interim milestone was to research 10 existing mentor programs to assess their outreach programs, and then Sue, the supervisor, would provide the 10 research targets. We're not going to go through each interim milestone, but it is important to understand that they accumulate. Together, they add up to Evan successfully completing a single VAD activity. Sue, O supervisor, will have made sure to explain to Evan that they will repeat the process of building the work plan detail for each remaining VAD activity. As we take a look back at Evan's VISTA assignment description, we realize that his work plan is likely to grow as he adds in details for the remaining activities tasks. The breadth of the work that Evan will need to execute by specific deadlines helps illuminate why developing a work plan is so important. As you get going with a work plan, you are encouraged to find or develop a format that works best for you and hopefully accommodates your members' preferences as well. We're going to take a short break from on-screen text to display a simple and important point. No matter the format or layout of the work plan, work plans need to be updated and maintained after the member first drafts one. Work plans connect tightly to coaching because a work plan is a living document. So think of the work plan as a detailed itinerary description that we used earlier. We noted that the VAD provides an overall journey map, in our case, to France on New Year's. The work plan is what will help us make that happen. We included as an example that the work plan would likely detail which airport to leave from. But what if shortly before our trip, we learned that a serious storm is hitting our area when we depart? Well, the work plan would be adjusted to account for this development and perhaps reveal a different approach, such as leaving from a nearby city or state to avoid the storm. This process of reviewing and revisiting a work plan is so important to track the progress and account for hurdles and members want to regularly update the work plan with their supervisor's ongoing support. Supervisors have a unique role and are suited to assist members with the work plans because they monitor the member's performance and progress on their VAT activities, and supervisors have a responsibility to provide support and guidance to their members. After all, we all want a successful member year of service. VISTA leaders may also support the member with their work plan, for example, by helping members select a work plan format that works for them and helping members unpack their VAT activities to create interim milestones and steps in a work plan. But VISTA leaders should not be making decisions on their behalf or directing the member to do something. What sort of things should you be considering as you offer ongoing direction and support to your members in keeping up their work plans? Well, we're going, to do a round, we're going to round out our discussion now with seven tips to help you coach your members to successfully maintain and complete their work plans. The first tip is pretty straightforward. Supervisors should take care to provide a work plan template. Again, we've identified many template options and it's important to offer at least one or a couple to your members at the start of their service. They may not be familiar with the work plan, so giving them template really helps them grow. And as you share the template, be sure to frame its importance. Be sure to explain that the work plan is a roadmap for the member and the work they will do, and that the work plan will still be helpful once completed by serving as a professional journal or portfolio. You also want to explain that there is a time commitment for work plans that includes initial development and regular maintenance. Identify to your members the importance of budgeting time for developing the work plan, because it does take time, but it's so worth it especially at the beginning of the year of service. If a member has made it farther into their service without creating a work plan, that's no problem. It's never too late to work with them to start developing one. 
All you have to do is attune the work plan for where the member is at that point in their year of service, and then help them begin unpacking their VAT activities that they're currently working on. As a member's service progresses, the member should routinely schedule time to return to their work plan to review it and to make any warranted updates. So now that your member has a work plan template and understands that they will need to budget time for it, you can support the member by, the, by helping them complete the work plan. When first meeting and working with the member on their work plan, be prepared to address the member's questions or concerns. Orient the member in their year ahead and how their activities will contribute to the success of the project. Review the member's incremental steps or milestones to make sure that they're clear, they're the right number, and that they align with VISTA principles. Because another important consideration is, how realistic is the member's interim and final milestones, and do they account for common things like busy schedules, timing, or use of personal or medical leave? And then as a supervisor, you also want to be sure to identify professional development opportunities to help build the member's skills. And once the member's work plan is drafted, offer them continued coaching through your regular check-ins. These check-ins should reflect both your and your member's communication style and professional preferences to set the stage for the most productive collaboration. During these collaborative sessions, Coach the member by reviewing and assessing progress of the member's activities against the project goals. Reviewing and assessing progress of the member's professional development goals. Discussing the in-progress sections of the work plan, what the member is actually working on, and offering suggestions to the member as appropriate, such as adding milestones or new activities, removing unnecessary milestones, or editing items like inputting updates to the member's professional development. And then last but not least, celebrating the member's accomplishments. I can't stress this enough. That is such a key component to work plans and to a member's year. To help the member understand how critical their contribution is and how essential the work plan is organizing that contribution, cheer the member on in the work they've done and applaud any new skills acquired. This will also likely help the member stay motivated and feel like their role in the organization is recognized. The best way that you can coach someone is to get to know them. So spend time getting to know your member by meeting regularly, asking open-ended questions, and really trying to understand who they are, what they bring to their service, and what they'll need to be successful in the future. Keep in mind, where your member is in their service term as you learn about them will make a difference. For example, think about our VISTA members from earlier, Evan and Naya. An open-ended question you might ask a new member like Evan is, what would you like to achieve from this service opportunity? But that may not be as useful for a member farther, farther along. An open-ended question more suitable for a member like Naya would be, which resources most contributed to your success in completing your milestones? One other way I'll, I'll provide you to think about coaching someone is to observe them and the work that they are doing. As VISTA project work commences, take note and observe your members' progress, their actions, their reactions to situations in various aspects of their service. This may go overlooked, but this can really lead you on your own or in consultation with your member to discover accomplishments, additional needs, and various areas of support for your member. Our last tip centers on the fact that each work plan is intended for a unique individual. The work plan is a valuable tool for all members, regardless of their skills and personality traits. But the work plan format and its regular updating should reflect the members' traits and preferences. So we ask you to be as flexible as possible in your work plan approach and understand that what works for you or one member may not work for the, all the other members you're coaching. So it's important to accommodate things like the work plan template style, the frequency of updating it, the format of checking in, and more to really suit the unique style of your member because you want the member to also own the work plan and feel like they're part of it. And that'll help them produce a more successful work plan and an easier process moving forward. So let's review some of these tips with two coaching scenarios. In the first example, you were having a check-in meeting with Naya, again, a VISTA member who is seven months into her service, and you ask her how her past few weeks have been. 
Naya shares with you that she's generally good, but is feeling kind of overwhelmed with her activities and milestones. She says, things are good, getting stuff done, but I'm just really, really busy. My current milestone is taking a while to accomplish, and I really just need to finish it to progress. Lately, I really worry that I won't finish up my work before the project ends. So consider the coaching tips and best practices that Eric shared for helping members with their work plan. One best practice is to coach using open-ended questions to reduce assumptions that you may have about your member and their work and that the member may have about their own experiences or expectations. So we invite you to take a few moments to consider the following. What open-ended questions would you ask Naya to help ease her workload and reduce any anxiety that she may feel about completing her milestones? Um, again, we'll use the chat for this activity. We'll give you just about a minute um, to share your thoughts. All right, so lots of great uh, example of que open-ended questions here, um, asking about resources and support that Naya might need, um, asking about help with things like prioritizing or um, troubleshooting or problem solving, um, overcoming obstacles. So I'm not gonna read them all, uh, but I encourage you to scroll up, take a look at some of the, uh, the great ideas your colleagues have shared. Um, and thank you for participating with that. Um, so uh, a few other examples of open-ended questions uh, are things that get to action. Um, so an example of that could be, uh, when is the last time you reviewed the sections of your work plan? Um, and uh, can you describe the parameters you used to set up the timelines in your plan? Um, so those are just a couple of uh, specific uh, practical ways that you can get to some of the details uh, and help the, uh, help the member to uncover some of those for themselves. All right, great work there. Let's go ahead and move on with another scenario. So this is scenario number two, and it's a little bit later in the day, and you're now meeting with your new VISTA member, Evan. You learn that he's a quiet, but an excitable member, eager to do his work, but not necessarily be micromanaged in the process. And he says, I can't wait to start. I really wanna make an impact and see jumping from one activity to the next, depending on what's needed each day. And I'm sure I'll figure things out as I get going, which I wouldn't mind doing right now. There's the mute button. So consider again, the best practice of using open-ended questions to guide your members. So in this case, what open-ended questions would you pose to Evan to help guide his focus and his energy? So we'll give you about another minute to uh, come up with some questions.
All righty. So a lot of great uh, open-ended questions here for Evan, the new member. Um, some of them focused on uh, emphasizing and, and uh, supporting and encouraging his energy and enthusiasm, but trying to put some focus. So uh, maybe asking him about his own priorities, his own uh, goals, and um, and then tying that in to uh, to the, the goals of the, the, the assignment. Um, also looking at um, uh, ways that you can support him, right? Asking for uh, Evan to share uh, where, what areas where he might want to get some support um, or where he might need uh, some help in focusing or getting questions uh, answered so that he'll have a better sense of, of where he needs to begin. What, you know, how do we get started? Um, so a lot of great uh, questions there. Uh, keep them coming if you haven't had a chance to submit yours. Um, and so uh, one of the things I noticed here is uh, I mentioned this, a number of you uh, wanted to really encourage the enthusiasm, but that he needed some organization around it. And so a work plan is a way that he could do that. Um, and a couple of other uh, questions that you could ask, open-ended questions, could be uh, to ask him, you know, if he has thoughts about the order or sequence he would need to use to approach those activities. Um, and then, as, as a number of you said, asking him to identify uh, activities where he's going to need some additional support, whether that's uh, resources or guidance, um, or maybe his own professional development. Um, so great examples there. Um, thank you for participating. And we'll go ahead and move on. So back over to Eric. Thank you, Andy. I completely agree that coaching members using open-ended questions is a great approach. And I, I really enjoyed seeing the questions you would pose to both Naya and Evan. It's, I wish I had known all this information when I was serving. But we are now going to zoom out from a specific coaching practice to look at work plans overall and we'll share the VISTA work plan with you in the chat, the VISTA work plan template, so you can access it as we reflect on two main ideas that we hope you walk away with today. First, it's important for supervisors to know what a work plan is and that it's different from other types of plans. Along with that, it's critical to know how to write a work plan so that supervisors can help members create their own at the start of their service and come to appreciate the many benefits a work plan provides to the member and the project. Introducing your members to work plans offers them a clear structure to better understand their role and tasks and develop realistic expectations of their VAD duties and what they are doing. Second, the VISTA program wants our projects to succeed and work plans can be a tool of success by helping supervisors and members plan and execute their work more efficiently. The collaboration between you and your members will also build the members' confidence that they have someone able to coach and guide them through challenges, when and if they're trying to learn and um, having challenges throughout their year of service. And by coaching your members on their work plans, you help increase the likelihood of your members and your project success, which supports your overall success. All right, great. And thank you for that summary, Eric. So um, let's check in with you now. We have this opportunity for you uh, to see how well you've been following along today's conversation. So in just a moment, I'm going to read a scenario, and then you'll see a question pop up on your screen. Um, and if the pop-up question doesn't appear, you can let us know in the chat uh, or raise your hand, and um, our producers at LSI will help. All right, so here we go. Uh, your member, Evan, sent you an email identifying the interim milestones leading up to a final milestone in his VAD. But unfortunately, the text formatting was disrupted and the list is no longer in order. So your uh, task here is to review Evan's list to determine and identify which listed item is his final milestone. So we'll give you a few seconds to read through it um, and then use the, uh, the pop-up poll to select your answer.
All right, looks like a good number of you have uh, had a chance to respond. If you are uh, if you haven't yet clicked the submit button, go ahead and do that. Um, anyway, we'll go ahead and close out the poll and see how well you did. So uh, in Evan's unformatted list of uh, milestones, the interim and final milestones, uh, uh, taking a look Evan's final milestone is actually item D, send community organization specific marketing emails by May 15th, 2024. The other four items were, were the interim milestones that would help Evan to accomplish this larger goal. So it uh, looks like this formatting issue uh, was no match for many of you. Uh, great work on selecting, identifying Evan's final milestone. And as you seek to refine your work plan approach and development, I encourage you to explore the recommendation for further study, how to create a work plan with the template. This is an article from BetterUp, and it covers several relevant topics, including reasons to use a work plan, examples, and types of work plans. And this can be a great asset to you as you help your members see the value in creating and customizing a work plan for themselves. And I do want to also highlight Vista Connect, which is part of the Vista Campus. I do want to draw your attention to this tool for sponsors and supervisors who can communicate with each other. The Vista Campus does have two sections. Vista Training is where you can access learning paths and modules for things like recorded webinars and materials and resources. The section on the screen now is called the Vista Connect, and that's where you're able to collaborate and network with so many others. So I encourage you to take time this afternoon and this week to log into your Vista Campus account, click on Vista Connect in the menu, and start collaborating with your peers. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'll quickly mention, people have asked about resources and templates and sharing with each other. Well, the Vista Campus now allows you to upload resources that you have created and share them with your colleagues. Simply log into the Vista Campus, again, click on Vista Connect, and then click on the Explorer drop-down menu and select Groups. On that list of groups, you'd select the group that applies to you. You'd select Supervisor, but in this example, we selected Leaders. Then look for the link to Resources in the medium blue menu bar toward the right side. You'll see a button labeled Create Resource, and you click on that to enter information about the resource and describe how it can be used. You'll attach a document and then click Save, and your resource will be queued for moderator review. And once approved, it'll appear on the site. So we're very excited that this feature exists, and we really, really hope that you'll start using it to share resources with your colleagues. Yeah, thank you for sharing those features of the campus, Eric. I am a huge fan. Um, we're going to shift gears now and ask you to think about the webinar. We invite you to offer your feedback. Your input is extremely valuable for us. Um, we review the, the comments uh, and, and all the responses that we get to our, um, our webinar evaluation survey. Um, and we really are interested to know how we can improve this presentation. So uh, that survey is probably open already in your browser window behind the Zoom. If not, um, we pasted the link there. Thank you, Jeff. So, uh, and thank you in advance for sharing any feedback you might have. Now it's time to answer your questions. Um, and remember, uh, you can post questions anytime in the chat panel. Um, if you um, have uh, any that um, you haven't shared yet, we had a couple that came in earlier. Um, so the first one was, are members advised and or provided training on work plans during their orientation? So Eric, do you wanna to speak to that question? That's actually a great question. Um, I'll answer it by saying during the VISTA member orientation or the VMO, our office VISTA headquarters does talk to members specifically about their VISTA assignment description since all members are required to have a VAD. We don't go into detail about work plans since they're not required, although they are strongly encouraged. But because there's so much coming at members at, from VISTA headquarters and other entities, we don't talk about work plans too, too soon. However, we do have some resources available to support you as you orient your members. And also, hot off the presses, 
You'll get more information in early September, but there's going to be a, a member webinar for VISTA members in September, specifically on VADs and work plans. So you'll get more information and can encourage your members to attend that for additional information and insight on work plans. Great, thank you for that, Eric. Um, and then we had a question uh, which you answered already in the chat, but about uh, the, the, the resource sharing area that you demonstrated is on the VISTA campus and it's on the VISTA Connect side of the VISTA campus. So again, that resource sharing area, go to learn.americorps.gov, log in, and then click on VISTA Connect, um, go to your groups and you'll be able to uh, share resources there. Um, and I'm just scrolling back to look for some other questions. Um, actually, we had another one that came in earlier. Um, so Eric, how would, what advice would you give on coaching a member uh, who's already several months into their service, um, but who needs to create a work plan? Any thoughts on that, someone who's not at the start, but sort of midstream and you're gonna ask them to create a work plan? Absolutely, and I, I would briefly say, think of it as a, a shorter term. So if they're only six months in and they still have six months left, there's still a good chunk of time for them to be able to get professional development, for them to be able to look at their remaining VAD tasks and really, as we said, unpack it and break it down. So I think the advice I would give is really explain to your member the purpose even of a short-term work plan and how it can benefit them as they finish out their year of service and look to what's next because that work plan can really drive their future as well. And I would encourage you as the supervisor to reflect on the work plan to help them transition out of service and help you think about what's next as well. So it really is a, a reciprocal benefit to both you and the member, even if they only have a few months left in their service. All right, thank you for that, Eric. Um, well, I see uh, that's all the time we have for questions. So I want to thank you, first of all, Eric, um, for all of your time um, and expertise in this and thank everyone for the questions and for being with us today. Uh, I also wanna invite you to our next webinar that's coming up on project reporting. That'll take place next month on Tuesday, September 19th, same time, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that session is going to be targeted to AmeriCorps VISTA sponsors and project directors to help them understand the AmeriCorps reporting requirements capturing information needed for those reports and how to look at the various phases of the project as they tie into reporting. So uh, if you're not the project director at your VISTA project, you might encourage your project director to attend. So thank you again for being with us. Uh, extend a huge thanks to uh, everything you do to support the AmeriCorps VISTA program in your role and for all the participation. We had great participation on today's webinar we hope to see you again soon. This concludes our webinar.